hello everyone and welcome back to another video if you're new here hey my name is destiny make sure you like comment and subscribe y'all hit the notification bell if you aren't new here and you have subscribed what are you doing like that button is right there go ahead and click it but anyways y'all if you read by the title y'all i am giving you all 10 holy grail tips for natural hair now i know y'all wonder like what do you know about natural hair and da 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 so y'all I started my natural hair journey back in like 2018. I would say 2017 because I haven't gotten a perm after that, but I wasn't planning on going natural. It just kind of happened. So I think my freshman year, like springtime freshman year or so, I ended up doing a mini chop and y'all, my hair was a mess. And it's just been trials and tribulations ever since then. I've learned things, I've tried things and failed at things, y'all. So I decided to sit here and do this video for you all, for all the girls who are starting their natural hair journey or have been doing it, but feel like they've been doing it wrong. This video is for you. Uh, before we get into this video, I do want to say that I am at my boyfriend's house. So like I did my hair yesterday night. I'm pretty sure y'all probably saw that video. It's the one before this. If not, it is in the description below. But we ended up getting a snowstorm. So I had to stay overnight. And I was like, hmm, what can I do since I got my camera, I got my light. Like what can I do here to like pass some time and get some content going? And I was like a hair care tip video for girls so this is where we are and this is what we're doing so let's get into this video so first tip is that we need y'all to find out what type of hair you have and i'm not talking about no 4a or 3c or whatever i'm not talking about that i'm talking about porosity if you do not know what porosity is y'all it is the hair shaft on your follicles to see whether or not how your hair is able to hold or retain moisture. Um, if you wanna do more deep dive search into that, uh, I will link something below for you if you wanna like learn more about that to figure out how you wanna know like the depths of what porosity is, I wanna say of that source. But yeah, so we need to figure that out for y'all. The quickest way to figure out what type of hair you have is to get a glass of water. Warm water, don't not have to be cold or hot, just a glass of water. And you take a strand of your hair, that's clean clean only take a strand of your hair and you sit it in the water now if it floats y'all that means you have low porosity if it's in the middle you have a normal porosity and if it sinks you have high porosity now if you have high porosity that means your hair is able to retain moisture easily so y'all are very lucky y'all are lucky so be happy but if you have that it's able to retain moisture easily it's able to let the moisture go in and go out you don't have to do too much to your hair it, it's y'all just lucky i'm just gonna say that again if you have high porosity you're gonna be able to use cream products um anything that's have like a heavier consistency for example shea moisture you are able to use their products and use it well and you don't have to worry about build up being on your hair if you have normal porosity, which is in the middle, you are able to use any products you want. You don't have to have a particular brand with a particular porosity. You don't need any of those, unless you want to. Like, not all products are gonna work in your hair, but it doesn't matter as far as like, if you use a cream base or a water base or like a thicker base, like it does not matter what brand you go with as far as like their consistency of their products so y'all are lucky too because woo. next is low porosity as y'all can see that's me because i'm bragging over here about them being lucky but low porosity here it is hard to retain moisture and what i mean is that the follicles on the hair shaft is closed it's always closed it's still tight like a ziploc bag that don't break basically it is sealed super tight and we have to use products that are water based that are liquidy that are very thin in consistency and i know that's a lot and i know everything like where i'm fine at it like it's easier it's easier than what y'all think and if y'all want me to do a video on like the different type of hair products for hair porosity leave a comment below and let me know um even though i don't have high porosity or normal porosity i tried those products so i'll be able to tell you what works for your hair as far as porosity does and what don't so don't try to come for me in the comments because i got low porosity hair i kind of already said this in tip one but i'm gonna repeat it again for tip two and that is everybody hair does not use the same products 
Now, I know y'all probably gonna think, but like, well, her hair looks good. Why don't look good on mine? Because y'all don't have the same porosity, period. We're just gonna leave it at that. Y'all don't. So don't be trying to sit here and use, let's say you have a low porosity hair and you try to use Shea Moisture. It's gonna sit on your head. It, that's what it's gonna sit on your head and you're gonna be looking stupid with build up. Trust me, I've been there, I've done that. I already know what the T is. So we already know you can't use that type of product. And let's say you have high porosity, you can't use products that's like very like liquid based. It's not gonna do anything for your hair. For example, as I am, like some of their products are too watery for you. So you would need something that's more heavier and they have some, but you have to look for the product. So it's gonna be trial and error, y'all. So y'all are probably gonna spend a lot of money on hair products. And so like I said, if you want a video on what to get and what not to get based on porosity, leave a comment below. But hair products will save your life. It will make your hair more manageable. So don't think what works for their hair will work for y'all. You are on your own journey. Your hair is different as far as porosity, density, like everything is different about your hair. You will find somebody with the closest as you and you might have to watch them and stick with them because if you watch somebody who has fine hair, who has high porosity hair and you have low porosity dense hair like me, then why are you watching them? Cause they can't help you. They can't do nothing for you. So make sure y'all are watching the right people that have the same type of hair as you so you can have, use the same type of products to figure out if they work for you or not. Don't go against your hair, go with it because if you go against it, it's gonna end up matte. You're gonna have to chop it off again and start all the way back over. And who wants to do that after the second or third time? Well, the third step is lock or lock method. There's two different ways to spell it. You have LCO and LOC, and that is an acronym. So the L stands for liquid, the C stands for cream, and the O stands for oil. Now I'm figuring out, y'all probably wondering why does the method matters? Because that's the best way for your hair to retain moisture and retain length. So let me explain to y'all. So if you have high porosity, like I said, your hair is very easy to get in moisture, meaning that it's easier for your hair to get too moisturized and it be limpy. I know that sounds weird, but it is. If like you have to think about it. So you will have to use the LOC method, the LOC lock method. And that's because the oil is gonna be used as a barrier between your hair and the moisturizer and the oil is gonna protect your hair from getting too much moisture at once. So it will feed your hair the moisture as it needs. That's what the oil for high porosity hair is gonna do. If you have a low porosity hair, you will have to do the LCO method because your hair, it has a hard time retaining moisture or getting in moisture because your follicles are closed. So what you have to do is you have to put the oil last so you can lock in that moisture from the cream. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to break it down into parts for y'all, but that's really the basic method for it. So like I said, lock method is for girls with low porosity, that's LCO, and lock method LOC is for girls with high porosity. And normal porosity people, y'all can do either. So whatever your hair feels like it needs, if it needs more moisture, do LCO. And if it don't need more moisture, do LOC. You have an option, you have a preference, whatever works. Next y'all is detangling. Now I'm pretty sure y'all like, why are you putting this in this video? Y'all do not understand how many people I have talked to that sat here and said, yeah, I don't detangle my hair. I just wash it, get out the shower, slick it back in a bun and I go. They do not care about their life. They do not care about their hair. They don't care about none of that. Because all you're doing is watching all, washing all the dead hair in your head. Along with the hair that is in you, like actually in your brain. Well, not your brain, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Like y'all are actually washing both the dead hair and the good hair together. And y'all are making it matte. So make sure you detangle your hair. And I'm not just talking about just for washing. I'm talking about for when you are trying to like start like your wash and goes, your ponytails, shampoo, conditioner, detangle your hair before the process. So what I normally do that works for me, y'all, I do it in the beginning before I shampoo my hair. And I do not detangle my hair dry. Let me put that in there. I detangle my hair with some water or with a detangling spray. Uh, I will link the one I use down below in my Amazon storefront and as well as other things that I use on my hair down below as well for y'all if y'all want to check that out. 
but like I said I do not detangle my hair dry I'm making it worse I'm literally just making it worse and y'all are gonna thank me later but make sure when you detangle your hair you start from the ends and you work your way up I watched my little cousin y'all my little cousin and my niece I'm gonna throw her in there too I watched both of them detangle their hair from the top and then work their way to the bottom and they wonder why their head is hurting and they do it dry they wonder why their head is hurting they wonder why their hair is coming out easily because they're doing it wrong so let's hope that y'all are listening y'all detangle your hair while it's wet and y'all start from the ends and work your way up that will save your life and save you so much time if you only do that one little step on you. this next step goes hand in hand with detangling and it is parting your hair in sections now if you watch my previous videos y'all you see that i always part my hair into four sections to start off with and after i have to part them in four and i'm like you know styling them and it's a too big of a piece i part that section into another section because it's easier to work with your hair that way and i only i don't only part my set my hair in sections when it comes to styling it i part my hair in sections when it's time for me to wash it condition it deep condition it hot oil it anything because you're able to work with that section and get that product in there very good to make sure that it's coating each strand each hair like each and everything y'all so working a section will save your life because if you just wash your hair all at once you're not getting everything you're getting the perimeter if you're getting the middle it's probably dead hair it's probably tangled you're probably looking crazy so make sure that you put your hair in sections and four sections to start off with and go smaller if you need to and that will sit there and help the product get in your hair like i said and it'll give it more manageable for when you're trying to style it or wash it because you won't feel like you're just up there just making a mess next tip i have y'all is to make sure you are oiling your ends now i know y'all probably gonna say yes man i oil my ends do you really oil your ends or do you oil the shaft of your hair and hope it gets down to your ends let like let, let me know what you do because i bet that's what you're doing because that want, want me to be honest with y'all i was doing that i ain't gonna hold y'all like i said i had to learn this i done that before i'd be like up here oiling my hair doing my little lock method when i get down here i just use whatever is resting my hands no y'all need to start oiling the ends first and the remainder go on your hair shaft and the reason why i say that is because your ends are the most driest they're the most fragile they're easy to break they're easy to be damaged so you start using the oil at the bottom and you work your way up and that will retain you some length y'all let me tell you again that will retain you some length i've gotten four inches of my hair cut off because for one i wasn't taking care of it two i was stressed three i wasn't putting oil on my ends and four i really wasn't doing my hair once again i wasn't taking care of it that step alone has lost me four inches and i'm not proud to say which is why we are doing this video because i'm getting back on my own hair journey y'all because i had oh wait we, we just i'm getting back on my own hair journey y'all and the next step to go with that y'all is to get your ends trimmed as frequently as you need to like i do two times a year that's me personally i actually went longer than two times a year i've actually haven't got my ends clipped in like a year and a couple months y'all and guess what once again i got four inches of my hair cut off because i was not taking care of it so make sure you get your ends clipped regularly because if you don't if you think you some people can do once a year some people can do every other year like whatever the case may be i have to do twice a year y'all and some people might have to do more frequently than that it just depends on your hair not really the porosity or anything it's most of course the, the genetics the genes because if you have people who are prone to hair breakage maybe you have to take extra care of your hair and get your ends clipped more frequently because your split ends might happen quicker than anybody else and to somebody who family have great healthy hair who tend not have that much breakage and their hair can grow down their back by them not doing anything y'all can wait longer that's just the way the world works so i'm think i'm one of those normal people that gotta go twice a year um if you're not trip your own ends great good for you i'm too scared i need my hair i can style it i can't clip it I ain't gonna try to clip it because I bet y'all my hair gonna be uneven. It's probably gonna be just like this and y'all gonna talk about me. So we're not even gonna do that to my hair today. The next step y'all is to make sure you have a satin bonnet and a satin scarf to go to bed in. Now I know people are like, why you gotta have both? So y'all, I have a big satin bonnet. Um, 
if I sleep rough, it fall out my head. So what I do is I have this hand scarf where I tie this back and then I put the bunnet over it. So if the bunnet come off, my scarf is still on my head. Or if you want to make it easier, buy you a sand pillow. My auntie just did that. She bought me a sand pillowcase and haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna start just in case I forget to wear my bunnets and stuff, y'all. But those three or two or however many you want to buy will save your life because the sand in it, the silkiness, it helps protect your ends. It kind of pulls your ends. Um, I found that out the hard way, but kind of pulls your ends. So the satin scarf or satin bonnet or the satin pillowcase will help preserve your ends as well, y'all, and keep you with that length for 10. Next step, y'all, will be to train your hair. And I know y'all probably wondering, what do I mean by that? So what I mean by you trying your hair, you are giving your hair a routine to remember. So like, let's say like you have a daily routine. What you do, you get up, brush your teeth, wash your face, you go to the gym, you go to work, whatever you do, you have a routine. You need to develop a routine for your hair so your hair knows what's coming next. Before I stop taking care of my hair, my hair, I, my hair knew what was coming next based on how manageable it was. Like at first, my hair did not want to retain like the heat from like the shower, the steam and stuff. It would not retain that type of moisture, so I had to put a bonnet. I had to keep a shower cap on, so the little steam can stay in there. Now I don't have to wear a shower cap because my hair automatically knows to keep that in and retain it for the next step. Just like if I decide to do a pre-shampoo, my hair is conditioned and moisturized, and when I use my shampoo, it's not strict. It, it's training. It's learning how to deal with certain products. It's know what step is next, and if it doesn't, um, it's gonna react out. Like I forgot to do a pre-shampoo, and my hair was like, "Why are you shampooing me?" Like it did not work out. So, doing a routine, training your hair. To know the order that's gonna be in will save you so much time manageable manageable wise it will also save you a lot and i mean a lot of product y'all so make sure you do the same routine for your hair unless you're trying something new and they say don't do that i say just see what works for your hair but make sure you train it and do the right process and the right routine so your hair can know what's coming next and you can save a lot of money on product because i don't want through things spend money on products like almost every week all right y'all the last tip for this video is to listen to your hair now y'all know y'all probably wonder like what am i talking about but i promise y'all y'all hair will tell y'all what y'all need so um like i said like let's say you do your routine and your hair is lengthy once you finish that means you have too much moisture and you need to cut back on the moisture or you might need some protein and you might need to get you a protein treatment to put in your hair. Um, your hair might need an oil trim. Your ears might not curl. So you might need your ends clipped sooner. Like there are different ways for you to listen to your hair, y'all. But you just need to know what's going on and you need to figure it out. Like I know my hair typically always looks like this. I know. So let's say like something like this is not as curly and it's like straight. I need to cut back on the moisture or I need to get a protein treatment. Both of those matter. Um, let's say my ends don't curl. I need a, I need my ends clipped. Like listen to your hair because it will tell you what to, it needs. You might not be able to fix it with, oh, I might just need a little bit more protein or I didn't do my hair right this time. No, your hair is going to tell you what it needs. It might need more water for all I know. It might need different type of oils. You never know. So make sure you listen to your hair, look it up if you need to, to see if you're just tripping or if you don't know what you need. Like I said, look it up so you can see what you need. Yeah, that is it for this video. Like I said, leave a comment below if you want to see a video on different products to use for your hair or if you want to see a breakdown of my hair routine or you want to high tear my hair up at night. Leave a comment below to let me know which one of those things you want to see next. And like I said, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You'll be on the road to 500, y'all. We are almost there when I look at this video. We are over the halfway mark, y'all. So we are almost at 500. So I want to say thank you all for watching. Make sure you subscribe. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.